Susan, welcome to the show. It's been a pleasure to see you working here. It's a pleasure to know you. We've known each other for quite a while. And uh, what? tell me about last night, though. You were on a team, and you did what last night? So last night we did a round robin. Um, it was a contest, and the uh, it was a... a uh, the law enforcement benefit shoot, right? Law enforcement benefit shoot. That's a <laughs> and the winner lawful. gives all the money to the, the, their uh, the law enforcement city of their choice. Choice, that's right. Okay. Would you not agree that the money wasn't really the thing? They want that freaking trophy to show off that, hey... Oh, that was right a beautiful now. trophy. It has an eagle, American flag. It's, it's pretty, pretty nice. It's really nice. And hopefully soon it'll be posted up on Facebook and go check it out there. But Susan, first I, I've known, I, you know, it's been so long, I can't remember when we first made contact. I think you just came to the shop one time. I, I a took a show. CHL class from okay. you um, uh, about eight years ago now, I believe. Okay. So I've, I've had my carry license for roughly seven or eight years. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Don't mess with Susan. She's a pretty darn good shot. She can handle herself under stress. That was one of the, the neat things about the competition that I set up there and the way I did it was to stop shooting at a piece of paper and get your stress levels up. You're shooting at a piece of paper, but instead of just standing there shooting, you're competing against somebody else. You're under time constraints with accuracy using different people's guns. That's and, right. And if you can handle that, it's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, it's pretty stressful. It's a good... Uh, very good, you know, tool to use to get better under stress and pressure. And if the gun jams, you unjam it or you move on to the next gun. You only have 60 seconds to do six guns, 10 seconds a gun. That's, that's right. That's right. So. And, and did you not notice? I noticed this a couple of times. Some people with malfunctions, they're like, uh, uh, what do I do? And the brain has to start thinking, and then you utilize what you learned to accomplish it, right? That's right. Uh, if you don't practice, would you not say that doing that under stress would be kind of difficult? Yes, it's difficult. You have you do have to practice to get good at that. I remember when I saw you the first time when you first did the round robin, you're like, uh, oh, I got a malfunction here, what I do? And now, man, you are slick as snot on a doorknob. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to win. <laughs> <laughs> we got a competitor here, ladies and gentlemen. Susan, before we screw up, tell everybody how they can get in touch with you when it comes to the painting aspect. And tell us a little bit about your painting okay. to make sure we don't... Oh, uh, I have been painting since fifth grade. Um, I started painting again very seriously last year. I have a blog. You can go to look at my paintings. It's SusanSterlblog.com. I'll spell that for you. It's S-U-S-A-N-S-T-E-R-L-E-blog.com. And uh, I'm going to post all my paintings on that, and you can go and check it out. You can email me at sconley6 at gmail.com. I teach painting classes in my home, in my dining room, uh, on Mondays and Thursday nights from 6 to 8, 8.30. Sometimes we go long, we're having a good time, so we just hang out and paint. So yeah, that's that fun. Like fun. Do you do finger painting too? Uh, well, we can, we can accommodate finger painting. Okay. If, that's, if that's what you like to do, we can do that. I like to get messy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, how did, you, how did you get started in painting? I know you started when you were five, but what was it just... Um, Somebody told you to do it, or you had this desire? Oh, my to... mom had. My mom was artistic, and um, I took a painting class in fifth grade, and um, it's kind of just went from there. I remember drawing in second grade. You know, I'd take my drawings to the teacher, mm -hmm. and so I've been, you know, doing this for a and long time. You said time. your mom was artistic. That sounds very parallel yeah. to me because my dad was very artistic. Many oil paintings, and uh, oh wow, actually down the shop, the one of Iwo Jima that's over that one window. My dad painted that. Yeah. And he's did, done many more, and that got me into uh, artwork. My medium, however, was basically pencil and charcoal. What kind of mediums do you do? Do you do it all? We do. I do pencil, um, charcoal. I I prefer oil and acrylic. Acrylic is a plastic-based paint, and it's water-based, and uh, so it dries a lot faster than oil. Um, I prefer oil. Um, I was in Colorado this last week, and we did. We went outside and painted some acrylic paintings. What are you using um, on the portrait? This is an oil painting. How long does it usually take to dry? Uh, you probably need to let it dry about a week, and then you can ship it. Oh, and, so I can't caress the thing. picture there and say you, that's... You can put your fingers on it and do some finger painting if you'd uh, like. Do that. Okay. that looks really good. <laughs> I mean, I'm amazed. I'm amazed at how quick you did it. And, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm moving around. I'm not sitting here still. She's just looking at me and saying, okay, there he is. Boom, got a part of it. She's got my cap down, my beard down, the eyes down, um, everything. It's, it's, it's just awesome. What's your favorite medium? 
my favorite medium is oil, but I like to draw. I also like to really draw with a pilot pen and just pens in general pilot and pen. sketch in a sketchbook. Pilot pen is a black marker. It's a very fine tip marker. Oh, okay. So it's, it's fun. But I have a lot of students now. They come. I'm very blessed to have people. I've got one set of uh, students that's the grandmother, her daughter, and then her daughter uh, come to paint. It, you know at my house are there some people who just can't do it or is there a way I'll give you an example I get people who say they can't shoot well in 30 minutes I got them shooting are there tricks like that when it comes to painting on how you can paint? yeah basically when you paint um, basically it's a fear factor we all are worried about the final product and um, what you got to do is just pre you know you have to enjoy the process it's like when you were a little kid when you were two or three you know and they put a piece of paper and a pencil down in front of you or crayons, you just went ahead and you drew whatever and you weren't worried about the final product. You were just enjoying the process. And um, that's what it's all about. Because if you end up worrying about the final process or the final product, if you think you're gonna do a Picasso or something like that, um, it, it, doesn't all, it doesn't come out. So what you have to do is, what's happening is you're thinking about yourself you have to get you have to stop thinking about the final product and think about the process well the final product is important though at the end result right because if you're try, if you're trying to like um like paint a picture of me i mean hopefully it'll end up looking like me right but right but what would be what would be what would be a trick a, a, a concept to say other than what you're saying you got to stop worrying about the final product is there like practice strokes you can do? Is there... Well, this is what I teach. I teach, uh, let's say we, the first thing we'll usually do is a still life and it'll be all white. And so what we'll do is we'll shine a light on one side and we will talk about the shapes in that still life. Everything's a shape. It's not a face. It's not an apple. It's not an orange. Everything is a shape. So you have to think of things in that regard rather than it's, you know, uh, Matt Vitros that I'm painting. It's, uh, the cap is like round. The, the head know. is square. Yeah, right. the head is an oval or whatever. You know, it's all about shapes. It's all about darks and lights and values. And um, I try to teach that it's just shapes. And then what happens is you forget that it's an object and you know, you're just looking, you're practicing looking at the shapes, paint, putting the paint on the palette correctly, and then putting that on the on your canvas. What, what about color shades? How do you how do you grasp in your eyes what you see and transform it into your paintbrush? How do you know how much to put in and how much not? Is it just practice? Yes. Time it's on? just practice, right? That's it's it. It's just practice. You got to practice um, doing the round robin in order to get good at it. So what kind of drills would you do? You say, I want to do a flesh tone, so I'm just going to do little patches of flesh tone until I, I like what I see. And well, what we what start colors? out with is um, I try to get my students to cover the whole canvas in shapes first and colors and then we end up then you add lights and darks to it but um, what you want to do is paint a whole painting all at once and not little pieces at a time so that it all looks like one I've noticed whole. a lot of times when people start painting they do foliage or they do um, jars or they do fruit is that because they're just shapes or yeah it's just because nobody else will sit long enough for them to paint Oh no, it's because it's easy, it's simple shape. Um, you don't want anything too complex because then you get bogged down in the minutia of the detail and that's not what we're trying to do. We're just trying to you know, practice looking at the shapes and then you have a big shape, then you have smaller shapes within those shape, the, the big shape and then that's what creates an apple. So what you're saying is there's nothing really difficult if you use the concept of painting shapes as compared to saying, I've got to draw a face now and the eye is recessed from the nose and the eyebrow is over that. That's you right. take each section and turn it into a shape. Right. Wow. What happens I then, though... I learned that just in five minutes with her sitting here. Just think what you can learn. <laughs> How long is your class? It's two hours. It's from six to eight or sometimes we stay till nine. You know, she depending. painted a painting in less than two hours. And she just taught me how to, to do an eyeball as not an eye, but a shape of some sort. That's pretty darn good. Keep talking. What else can you tell me? How long, okay. Uh, go ahead. Uh, let's see. How, how, how large can your class be at one time so you can get um, individual training? I have, uh, I think the maximum I've had is five people. And five five to six is a pretty good size. That's interesting because like when I'm training, if um, 
I don't have other assistants around or anything. I like to keep it to about five people so I can give attention to everything. That's that seems right. like a good solid number there. Yeah. Um, I wanted to, we're going to jump back and forth here. You, we were discussing about a shooting group, about a woman shooting group. And we're not going to get into major details. I was just thinking, what was your attitude towards that? What, what, what do you think about that for women to get involved in a group of some sort to get together? Well, I think, uh, first of all, let me just point out that I'm very passionate about women knowing and not being afraid of guns and shooting guns. If, you're, if you have a gun in the house, you need to know how to use it, and you need to know how to use it safely. Now, when I got my CHL class, I had a, a son at home, and I had guns in the house, and I'm a single mom, and I wanted to know, first of all, how to use the gun safely and not, you know, be afraid of it. I had already shot guns and stuff before that, but um, I, I wanted to know what the, the safety rules were and how to use it pr correctly and so that there's not an accident in the house. But I also wanted to know those things so that I could teach my son mm -hmm. the same tools, well, the look, same. I, I've seen him shoot. It seems like you taught him pretty well. Yeah. He, so that's pretty good. He's a good, yeah, he's a good shot. Now, Getting a group of women, you know what I notice when you get a group of women together, like if we're thinking about a, a woman's group here, I do my seminars. I've got co-ed seminars and i got ladies only seminars. When I do the co-ed seminars and I have women in there with the guys, they sit there like a bump on a log most of the time. The women do? The women because the guy, he knows it all, he's uh, to some degree saying, no baby, this is how you do it. And when you do a ladies only class, I become the surrogate man and they listen to me because they don't know me. And when they don't know me, they just let their hair down. Don't, wouldn't you agree that'd be the same way with a women's club? Yes. Or a shooting? Yes. And yeah. I agree. Oh. So if, um, if you had a, somebody. Yeah, I think a women's it. group is a great idea in this area. Um, I'm all for, you know, women getting together and and learning how to um, shoot the the weapons that they own safely, um, and not not basically not to be afraid of the gun because it's just a tool, and the more you know about it. The safer you'll be with it, the, the better off you'll be protecting yourself. Can I bring up what we're thinking? Sure. To a very go ahead. Degree. We're thinking, ladies and gentlemen, Susan here is a major go-getter. We're thinking about um, organizing a, a women's uh, team, club, um, whatever you want to call it. And I think a lot of women should get together and think about doing this. And we're going to work out the details. And I think it's going to be a fantastic thing for women to get together, utilize the range, get together for camaraderie learning different skill sets, the whole works in empowering yourself and be prepared for potentially anything that may happen. And um, this would be great to get together. You let your hair down like we were talking about and have a good time. And Susan is a perfect example of how um, advancement goes with just opening up and listening and learning and having the desire and drive to want to learn, right? That's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm a major curious person. And maybe some of that will rub off on others who are a little bit timid, right? So. Yeah. If you have any hesitation, you need to come out of the range and meet this young lady here, and she'll she'll give you some motivation for sure. Okay, let's go back to your painting. Once again, tell everybody how they can make contact with you, and uh, if they're interested in the class, <coughs> any other information you give about the class, about you know, have some dates set up, what it costs to do it, so on and so forth. Um, it's pretty flexible. Basically, I do six classes. Um, they're they're I try to get you to commit to six classes. It's $150 for six classes, um, and you can come either on Mondays or Thursdays. So I'm committed to painting and teaching people on those nights it's from 6 to 8, 8.30. And um, sometimes I'm out of town. In Like last week, I was out of town, so we didn't have classes that week. But we're, we're flexible. And you, I make sure you get your six classes in, you know, so on the days example, that you need. So, for example, somebody wanted to come on a Tuesday and Thursday, so? Monday and Thursday. Monday and Thursday. Somebody wanted to come Monday and then Thursday and then Monday right. and Thursday. Okay. Yeah, so they can do that. you have to wait once a week. You can do mm -hmm. it a lot. Okay. Very good. And once again, they can go to um, SusanSterlblog.com mm -hmm. and uh, check out the information. you got artwork there that's on display that they can see. they got a way to contact you and all that kind of stuff. Well, yeah, and they, they can email me at sconnolly6 at gmail.com. It's S-C-O-N-N-O-L-L-Y-6 at gmail.com. And uh, that's also on the blog, that email. And I'll make a suggestion, and um, I don't think you'll have a problem with it. If somebody's uh, interested, a woman's interested in, yeah. in the ladies group, maybe they can contact you there? Yep, talk about they can it. contact me about that. And also on Matt's Facebook page, if you're interested in um, joining that group, just uh, 
you know, put your name, we'll message you on sure. Facebook or, you know, if you're interested, uh, put some contact information there and we'll get, we'll get a hold of you. I think it's great. And I think if you ladies get together and organize, ladies always do better than guys when it comes to organizing events. They always do. It's a fact of life. That's the way it happens. Um, you get this group going and it's going to smoke a lot of other groups out there and um, I'll do more than I can I'll do as much as I can to support the group to make you guys be 100% successful so hopefully you'll make contact you can call us here 254-697-6633 go to my website aaronsgunshop.com or go to the email address aaronsgunshop at gmail.com or go to uh, susansterlblog.com or and Susan I'm blind by my glasses read the website again or the uh, sconnelly6 at gmail.com and uh, make contact with her there um, Susan, any final words? I'm going to have to take a break and then finish up the program. You got any final things you want to do? Um, I'm passionate about women learning about guns uh, and not being afraid of it. If you're afraid, then you need to practice. You need to learn about your weapon and you need to come out, take your CHL class, take a, uh, a day of um, learning you know, with Matt and uh, get after it. Sounds great. Susan, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the painting uh, that you did. It looks fantastic. Can't Thank you enough for coming on and talking about what you do, and I will sure see you at the range, right? Yes, you will. Okay, Trey, Every Friday. All right, great. Trey, let's take a three-minute break. When we come back, we'll finish up the show. See you on the other side.